Leonardo AI's Canvas Editor is an awesome tool that can do so many things, but it can also be the trickiest part of the Leonardo AI platform to figure out. To help you get the most out of it, I'm gonna share a handful of tips that I've learned along the way. Let's go. We're inside Leonardo. I'm gonna come right up here and click on Canvas Editor. I've already made a video that covers the Canvas Editor's features, where things are, what the buttons do, and all that stuff. So if you haven't used the Canvas Editor before, or you're not somewhat comfortable with it, you might wanna go check that out. All right, let's go grab an image to work on. I'm gonna come over here and click upload image. And I'm not actually gonna upload. I'm gonna to go to the Your Generations tab and I'm gonna pick this fella, this park ranger, and he's out there with all his critter pals, but he's faceless. So I'm gonna bring the generation box over top of his face, grab the mask brush, draw a mask over the face area. And then the inpaint strength for this, if we go up to one, that tells it that it can completely ignore what's underneath and do whatever it wants underneath that mask. Since we have a general color and a shape for this guy's face, I'm gonna leave it on 0.9 and hope that it'll help it blend better. For the prompt, I just typed a male park ranger and I only specified male so that I can make sure it's kind of consistent with the physique of this fella. Will you generate? Wow, that's an interesting face. There's two. Oh, that's horrible. Three, no, no, no. And four is kind of okay, but it's awfully fuzzy. And this is where tip number one, using render density, is going to come in handy. So let's go ahead and cancel this. I'm going to leave it masked, but I'm going to come over here on the right side, down toward the bottom, and where it says render density 1x, I'm going to crank that up. I'm going to go to 3x. Let's see if that'll fit. Yeah, that's going to fit just fine. I'm moving my generation box over that masked area. I'll just hit the generate button. And what this is doing is it's increasing the resolution of the generation box. All right, here's our first option. Second, third, that's well, a little alien-like, I think. And fourth, just seems a little too bright for the image. But it does have the most detail, and I think we can make it work. So I'm going to go ahead and accept this one. And then I'm going to come right back in, mask over it again. This time, I'm going to take the in-paint strength down quite a bit. I'm going to take this down to 0.7. I'm going to leave that render density really high. So the first time we generated to fix this face, we had no face, and we wanted some detail. Then we got some detail. And now what I'm having it do is basically refine that detail a little bit more. So now it's got more information in there to work with. So that one is looking okay. Ooh, that one's, I don't know. Maybe that's good. The sun seems weird. I'm not digging that one at all. And this guy looks very plastic-like. I think we'll stick with this guy and we will accept. For tip number two, we got to look at this ugly fella right here. And tip number two is to separate the steps. So I've got this image that I'm having a hard time removing the background from in just about every background remover because it's having trouble figuring out where like my dark hair and the side ends and where the chair starts and it's having trouble with the hair and everything else. So background removal isn't working so good. Meanwhile, we need to put a shirt on him and make him decent. But if I were to just come in here and mask everything but his face and say, do this stuff, I'm probably not gonna get really good results. My better bet is to do one thing at a time. So the first thing I'll do is get a full shirt on him. I'm going to shrink this down so that all that fits. All right, now I need to grab a mask. Let's make this one kind of big. Oops, I'm getting a little crazy with my with my swiper here. Just filling all that in. And I'm also going to come up here, get the erase, and I'm going to switch that from erase all to erase mask because I've masked a hump on my shoulder here. And I'm also going to get rid of this hump that I seem to have added to myself over here. That's a little better, and I'm not really worried about the masking that went off the edge. That doesn't seem to have an impact. So with that mask applied... I'm going to start with an in-paint strength of 1. I'm going to leave render density at 1. And this time I'm going to focus on the thing, which is the shirt. I'm just going to say a button-down shirt, because that's what AI is for. When you don't want to go out of your tank top, but you need to be seen in a button-down. All right, that looks decent, I think. Let's go through our other options. And going through these options, I'm seeing the next tip that I want to point out. Pay attention right here. I'll even zoom this in a little bit. But as we flip through these variations, just pay attention right here in this spot. 
Notice how that never changes. I guarantee you that's because when I was masking, I probably left a little spot in there open unmasked. So whatever it's generating, it's making sure that that spot is always what it was to begin with. Now that it's zoomed in, I can absolutely tell that there's this gray spot in here. This will give you problems also if you're trying to create a specific color of something. If you'd said a red shirt and you've got this spot here unmasked, it's gonna say, okay, gotta give you a red shirt, but I gotta have this particular spot unchanged. So somehow I gotta make this red shirt incorporate this little gray spot here. So it'll do all kinds of weird things and give you funky Star Trek clothes. This is an easy enough fix. I just grab the brush to draw a mask, pop it on there. But if things are not turning out well, just go through like this, one, two, three, four, looking at the area that you know you made the change, where the mask was, and just watch for anything that doesn't change from one variation to the next. If it stays consistent, if it stays identical, it's probably because you missed a spot with the mask and it's not going to generate anything new under that. All right, now this first image, it looks like uh, that side got cut off. I'm not crazy about that. This one is probably okay. That one looks a little weird and that one. Looking at this, I'm thinking my head looks awful big for my body, which may be the case. But in this situation, I feel like my shoulders went wider in my original image. But if this was good and I want to keep it, then I wouldn't want to cancel it and hope I get the same result again. So I kind of figure this out. Well, tip number four, come over and grab your select tool and then go to the background image. Not what's in front here, not where we've generated. We're not going to cancel. We're not going to accept yet. We're just going to grab this background image. I'm going to drag it over here. Actually, I'll drag it down. It'll be easier when it's stacked to see what's going on there. So that looks smaller and it doesn't really work. Scroll through. It looks like two might be okay. Uh, three just has me in a weird position. I'm going to go back and accept two. Now, if I don't want to lose my head here, no pun intended, but if I don't want to lose the top of my head, what I'm going to do to get this image back exactly where it needs to be is just an undo, undo until it goes where it needs to be. You can also do control Z on your keyboard to get there. I think my head is still too big for my body, but I guess that's a personal issue. So we're going to go ahead and accept that. You can also use that trick if you generate something and you're like, I like it, but I don't love it. I might want to go back to what I had before. Just grab your select tool here. Then we're going to click and drag. First, that's moving our generation box off to the side. Then if we come up and click here, we'll be grabbing this last image that we generated. And then underneath it is our original. So we haven't lost our original. We can always just delete this and go back to where we started. Now, the second thing I wanted to do with this image is get rid of the background. I'm going to use a couple of tricks when the background removers don't work. First, I'm going to mask. Got my mask turned. I've got my mask tool selected. I'm going to come along and I'm going to get as close as I can. I might need to go back and clean this up a little bit. I'm going to mask everything that I'm considering background that I want to go away. Then remember, make sure you don't leave any spots unmasked or it will try to incorporate those into whatever it generates. And that just never works out well. Fast forwarding through a little bit of masking here at 1024 by 768. I'm not covering the whole image. So let's switch up that size. Go back and get our select tool. Let's go ahead and select this generation box. I'll move it up to cover pretty much my whole image there. A little bit more masking. I think we're going to be in good shape. And you're saying, well, wait a minute. I still see little black spots back there behind you. That's okay. All I'm trying to get to is something that I can upscale and then background remover and it works. Okay, here's what it gave us. One, two, three, four. We're going to go with number three. I'm going to run it through the upscaler. Now, unfortunately, when you're in the canvas editor and you want to do other things with the image, the only way to do it is to download this image and then bring it back into Leonardo. So I'll just hit the download. When I exit the editor, I'm going to pick the upscaler, add an image, drag in the image we just worked on. I'm going to leave the style on general. I'm going to leave the upscaler multiplier on two and creativity at three. Click the upscale button. I can tell I'm not going to have any trouble now removing the background of this image and using this ugly guy for whatever in the world I need to use him on. And the point of that exercise, I wanted to show you that I had a real purpose, an actual, you know, like reason to edit that image. And it wasn't just something I imagined up to play with. And what I found in working in that exact same scenario is if I came in and I tried to change things and, and just try and edit the whole image at one time, 
and say, make this a guy looking at the camera wearing a red shirt on a gray wall background, it caused me nothing but problems. But if you take it step by step, you get much better results. And there's no need to worry if you feel like step three ended up ruining step two for two reasons. One, you got the magic undo button or the keyboard shortcut control Z, and this is working in layers. So wherever this box is going and generating, it's generating an image in this whole entire box. So you've got these layers that you can go backward and see the different versions of what you've done and put yourself back in whatever spot you wanna be in. All right, new image for our next tip so that you don't have to look at me anymore. Well, I guess you do, but I'm down here in the corner at least. And this tip is about adding things to the image that aren't already there. So let's say we wanted to put a coffee mug right here. Do something like that, it doesn't need to be exact. And then we'd come down into our prompt box and we would say coffee mug. One way to help us make sure that we get a coffee mug out of this is focus this area way down. So instead of being 1024 by 1024, let's first make it 512 by 512. This is still way too big. We're gonna expand this image up. We're gonna have to redo our coffee mug, but that's okay. Just keep grabbing the corner and I'm stretching it out to make the image a lot bigger to work with. Yeah, this is about how I wanted it to be. All right, we're gonna need to make a bigger mask that fits our coffee mug silhouette. I made the weirdest lopsided coffee mug, but that's okay. The reason we want to focus this area as much as we can is so that we don't give the AI an out. You see, if we come down here and we type coffee mug, it might look around and say, oh, well, I see a coffee mug over there, so I don't need to make a coffee mug here. I just need to make something underneath this mask. But if we focus this area in pretty tight, it's going to have less of a chance of finding something that it thinks is a coffee mug and avoiding creating our new coffee mug. So for in paint strength, I will leave that up at one and we will say generate. We got a coffee mug. Uh, that one looks like the right size, but it looks like it's hovering over top the desk. Uh, this one just looks totally out of place and ugly and it's tilted toward us, which is weird for the desk. But any of these would probably be okay. Even the ones that look like they're out of their element and here's how. So let's go ahead and accept this. And this is tip number, I don't know, what are we on? I lost track. Anyway, this tip is go ahead and generate ugly when you're adding things, because you can come back and make it fit and make it pretty. The first one was probably much better and fit everything, but I specifically chose this one because it's pretty ugly and out of place and doesn't seem to fit in this image at all. But now that we've gotten the AI to go from nothing but a wall and a desk here to putting a coffee mug here, we're gonna mask over this coffee mug. Now we can tell it, it needs to kind of pay attention to the scene a little bit more. Maybe we make our generation box quite a bit bigger, like 1024 by 1024. We can select some things that maybe have the light and the shadows and showcase all that. Before we generate though, we do want to come tell it not to do an in-paint strength of one because we don't want it to completely ignore this coffee mug and make a whole new one. We want it to sort of pay attention to, yeah, there's a coffee mug under there. Let's take our end paint strength, maybe down to 0.8 and hit generate. We're not off to a good start here because our very first one, it got rid of our coffee mug. Let's see, number two, that is doing better. I guess that's probably a coffee cup, you might say, instead of a mug. That's probably something in between. But what you'll notice here is now it is starting to blend these things that it's generating more with the scene. Even the color is fitting better in the scene than that weird green thing that I had. And it's also trying to get the lighting right. It's trying to do a better job with the shadows and make it just fit into the overall scene better. Now for the final tip when using the Leonardo Canvas Editor, and that is the prompt. For that, we're gonna use this beach scene. I'm gonna put my generation box right over here in the sand. I'm actually gonna make that box a little bit bigger this time. And I'm gonna mask out something that looks like a surfboard, roughly. For prompt, I can say a surfboard. I set the end paint strength to 0.99 this time. All right, that looks like a surfboard. I guess that does too, and so does that. I kind of like the shadows on that one better. And then number four gave us a blank. So I think this is the one I would probably pick for this. Let's go ahead and accept that. So that's one way. You mask and then you say the thing you want to happen under the mask. But you can also put your generation box somewhere and then mask that area that you want your new thing to be in 
and then describe the whole scene or maybe the prompt that you originally used to create the image. And if you're adding something, that little thing you're adding in, maybe this is the prompt that you used for your image, a beautiful beach with palm trees, white sand and blue water on a sunny day. Now you wanna get a surfboard in there on the beach. Well, then I would probably do this masking and then I would come in here right before the white sand and say surfboard on the white sand, comma after the sand and then say generate. So now you're sort of describing the overall image to it. Variation number one, didn't really give us anything. Number two, we got something that looks like a surfboard. Three and four, that surfboard looked like it was moving, probably just because of the way it popped up. I think this is the least attractive of the bunch. So let's go ahead and accept that one because I wanna show you the third way that you can prompt in the Canvas editor. So number one is type in the thing that you want, a surfboard. Number two is to describe the entire scene or use your original prompt that you used to generate the image, but just mask and then add in whatever is missing. Now what I'm gonna do is instead of typing a surfboard or instead of typing a beautiful beach scene with a surfboard, I'm gonna use a stunning image. I'm gonna bring this in paint strength down I want this to probably about 0.6 maybe because I generally want what's there. I just want it to make it look a little bit better. And to try and get some detail in our surfboard here, I think we'll go ahead and increase that render density up to two and generate. There, that's looking better. That one's interesting. I think we're just gonna go with one. And there you have it, a handful of tips for using the Canvas Editor and Leonardo AI. Now this is not an exact science, that's why we have all these different tips, which are things you can try. They can vary based on the underlying image, the exact wording of the prompt, all these settings that we have over here, you know, the size of your generation box, and I don't know, whatever the robots are feeling like today. If you're not using Leonardo yet, there's a link in the description. I am an affiliate, which means if you end up making a purchase, I may receive a small commission at no additional cost to you. Now there's a free plan there that gives you like a 150 tokens per day to play with. So mess around with it, see if you like it on the free plan. And if at some point you end up upgrading to a paid plan using my affiliate link, thank you very much. I sincerely appreciate it. That's what helps support me and my family. Hope you found this video helpful and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.